Welcome to Enter the Unknown, your one-stop shop for answers to questions that you were never bored enough to ask. My name is FJ, and today I'm hoping that I actually manage to get this video out before Christmas. Otherwise, we're going to be celebrating New Year's with a deli bird and a stantler. That makes sense, right? Anyway, my original idea for this video was to do a present-only run with deli bird. Unfortunately, as it's a normal type attack, no matter which game I played, there would eventually come a point where there would be a mandatory battle with a ghost, and that would spell the end. So, I've brought Stantler on board to help out. As another semi-Christmassy Pokémon, I feel like it fits the bill. Hopefully, the help from Stantler will keep me from having to level Delibird up to like level 70 right at the start. As an Ice Flying type, Delibird is weak to just four different types. Steel, Fire, Electric, and then a quad weakness to Rock. So, just three of the first four Gym Leaders then? Good. Good. The basic rules will be at the side, but to simplify it, we can only attack non-ghost types with present, and Startler can attack ghosts. At least those are the rules for damaging moves. We're allowed to use as many status or non-damaging moves as we want. Also, we'll have no in-battle items or held items, and for an added challenge, we're going to be using a Deli Bird with Hustle instead of Vital Spirit. Just gonna make note of this now, that was a terrible idea. A really, really terrible idea. Oh, and one last thing before we get into it, here's how present works just in case you don't know. The move has 90% accuracy which will be lowered to around 70 thanks to Hustle, and when it lands there are four potential outcomes. 40% of the time it will deal damage with power equivalent to Scratch. 30% of the time it will hit with 80 base power, so equivalent to Strength. 20% of the time it'll just straight up heal the opponent for a quarter of their max HP. Finally, 10% of the time we get a 120 base power attack, basically like double edge without the recoil. So there are ways it can be good, it's just incredibly unlikely that it will be. Okay, hopefully that all makes sense. Let's get into it. Can you beat Pokemon Emerald using a Deli Bird with a present and a Startler for ghost types? Wow, that is an awful title. Eh, what can you do? So, as you can see, we've nicknamed our Deli Bird Eve, and she's stuck with Hustle and Present. Still, that's not a terrible thing when you're actually able to make contact. Maze Trico goes down after a couple of hits, and Eve earns 69 experience points to reach level 7. Nice! We receive our Pokedex from Birch, and some Pokeballs from May, and head out into the famous Stantler grass of Little Root. You know, that patch of grass in the protagonist's hometown that only contains Stantler? Well, shockingly, we run into a Stantler there and catch it with our final Pokeball just before we would have gone down to tackle. After nicknaming our Stantler Dasher, we make our way through Route 102 and confront our dad in Petalburg. He made us travel across the region in the back of a moving van and then left before we arrived. We don't even get a chance to get into it though, because Wally interrupts us and Norman basically tells us that he wishes Wally was his son. Anyway, I'm not bitter, okay? Let's just move on. In Petalburg Woods, we cross paths with a Team Aqua Grunt who's trying to pick a fight with a Devoncorp employee. His only Pokemon is a level 9 Poochiana, and we use Leer a few times with Startler before switching into Eve and finishing the job with Present. We did miss our first shot because, well, Hustle is a complete nightmare and will continue to be for the rest of the game, but we won the battle, and with that out of the way, we can head to Rustboro and go after our first gym badge. With Startler up to 11 and Delibird up to 13, we take on Roxanne for the first time, which isn't a particularly well thought out idea. We're underleveled, our only attack is not very effective, and her whole team has a 4 times effective move to use on Eve. It probably won't come as a surprise that we got crushed on our first attempt. And our second. And our third, come to think of it. In fact, Roxanne destroyed us like 10 times. Dasher's learned Hypnosis at this point, so I can introduce the classic Christmas strategy that we're going to employ for basically the entire game. They go to sleep, they get creepily leered at by a reindeer, and then they wake up and get a present. If that doesn't say Christmas, then I don't know what does. Against Roxanne's first level 12 Geodude, Eve decides to fail to deliver a couple of presents so she can get off a rock tomb. Thanks to Dasher's Intimidate and the massive level disparity, it only cuts away a third of Deli Bird's HP. After all the layering, one present takes Geodude down. The only real difference with her second Pokemon is that Eve actually connects on her first try. Roxanne's down to just her level 15 nose pass, and even though she almost takes out Dasher, she sleeps through two presents and goes down to Delibird. With that victory, we can add the stone badge to our case.
Before we get ahead of ourselves, let's hear a quick word from today's sponsor, Moo Moo Milk. Other milk companies would have you believe they can provide enough calcium to get you through the day, but studies show that your bones will crumble to dust if you don't drink Moo Moo Milk. If your milk isn't coming straight from a mill tank, then where is it coming from? That's something to think about. Visit ordermoomoo.com and use code E2 at checkout for 1% off your order. Over 1,000 five-star reviews can't be wrong. Moo Moo Milk, because nobody wants to drink the stuff that comes out of a zigzagoon. Thanks to Moo Moo Milk for sponsoring this video. Alright, where were we? Ah, uh, okay, so we help Mr. Briney and the Devon Corp employee, and then after delivering a letter to Stephen Stone, we visit the Doofer Gym. Brawley leads off with Machop, and seeing as we're overleveled, we start with Deli Bird. One present easily deals with the low-level Machop, so Brawley has to send in Metatype. Eve is feeling generous here, so she tries to heal up her opponent, but he's at full health, so it fails. Metatite can't actually attack if he keeps getting hit, so by connecting with back-to-back -back presents, Deli Bird knocks him out without taking any damage. Brawley brings in his ace, Makuhita, and we switch into Dasher. You know the plan, we just want to put him to sleep and then leer at him. That sounded weird. Brawley loves bulk up though, so Makuhita keeps upping his attack and defense. With Hypnosis missing, a couple of vital throws wipe out Stantler, taking it down to a one-on-one. -on -one. Deli Bird comes back in, and thanks to the lowered defense, one present takes care of Makuhita. With the Knuckle Badge in our possession, it's time to head for Slateport. When we arrive and attempt to deliver the Devon Goods to Captain Stern, we're interrupted by Team Aqua. We're confronted by a couple of grunts, but Eve is still pretty overleveled, so it's not much of an issue. Archie shows up after we beat them, but we don't have to take him on yet. Eventually, he leaves us alone, allowing us to hand over the Devon Goods to Captain Stern. That's about all there is to do in Slateport for now, so we head on to Moorville, but on Route 110, we run into May. In this battle, she leads off with Wingull, but one present from Eve absolutely destroys her. With her Slugma coming out next, we switch into Dasher so Eve can avoid the Fire-type moves. Once Slugma's defense is lowered and she's put to sleep, we bring Delibird back in to deliver some presents. The first one is of course an attempted heal, because that's what Eve's all about, but on the second try we land a one-shot. May's final Pokémon is her starter. At this point her Trico has evolved into a Grovile, and as a Grass-type, I'm happy to leave Delibird in. A crit present on our first attack knocks out May's Grovile, and with the easy win, we can move on to Morville. Our first job when we arrive is to crush Wally's hopes and dreams in a matter of seconds, but before that we have to build him up by missing our first present. We do a good job cutting him straight back down as our second shot connects and knocks out Ralts in one. Having avoided trainers since the first gym to keep our levels semi-reasonable, we now need to take on everyone there is so we can level up for Watson. The Morville City Gym Leader has white hair and a big white beard, and is described by Bulbapedia as a jolly old man. Look, I'm not saying he definitely pushed Tim Allen off a roof, but I'm certainly implying it. Can it possibly be a coincidence that he lives in a city that's names an anagram of Yule Victim Al? Yule Victim Al? He definitely pushed Tim Allen off a roof. Anyway, sorry about that, I got a bit off track. Just a bit. After quite a few failed attempts, we got Stantler up to 29, Delibird up to 35, and tried our luck again. The cheerfully electrifying man leads off with Voltorb, but the classic Christmas strategy goes perfectly, and we take it down without getting hit. Electrite comes in next, and we go back out to Dasher to put him to sleep. We didn't even need to use Leer this time. Eve came back in and let sleeping dogs lie. Actually, I don't think that's what that means. Anyway, Electric is down, and next up for Watson is his ace, Maynectric. Dasher comes back in, and the strategy works yet again. Maynectric does succeed in paralyzing Stantler, but shockingly, Delibird actually connects with Present again, and it's another one-shot. Watson's final Pokémon is his Magneton, and with its partial steel typing, it resists Present. As always, we go back into Dasher here, but his status condition means we can only get off a couple of leers before Dasher is knocked out. It also means Magneton is wide awake when Delibird comes in. I think we may have hit a 120 base attack present here, or at least an 80, as it knocks off about 3 quarters of Magneton's health. For some reason, Watson decides to go with Thunder Wave and Sonic Boom instead of the super effective Shockwave. That is a major let off that allows us to use one final present to win the match and earn ourselves the Dynamo Badge. There are almost no mandatory battles between this gym and the next, and seeing as we're overleveled, I'm going to do my best to avoid trainers entirely. 
After heading through Fall Arbor Town, we eavesdrop on some aqua and magma conversations in Meteor Falls. We then move on to Rust Durf Tunnel, where we get HMO4 strength just for using Rock Smash. We reunite Wanda and her boyfriend, and she invites him back to her house to... rest? Yes, rest. Our next destination is Mount Chimney, where we go to face off against Maxi. But while you watch that, I just want to say a quick thank you for helping me reach 3,000 subscribers. This may be my final upload of 2019, and so it seems like the best place to include this. I started making my first video towards the end of January. Pokemon challenge videos weren't a big thing at the time, and 5 months after that upload I still had like 8 subscribers. To go from there to here in a matter of months is crazy and amazing, and I really appreciate everyone who's clicked on one of my videos and given me a chance. Every like, comment, and subscription helps the channel out a lot, so thank you so much. Anyway, our battle with Maxi goes off without a hitch, so it's time to go after our fourth gym badge in Lavarish Town. For our battle with Flannery, we actually lead off with Delibird for once. The thing about Hustle is that even though it's a pain to deal with because you almost never stop missing, when you do hit, you hit hard. Our first shot wipes out Flannery's Nummel, and feeling a bit cocky, I don't switch out against Camerupt. I'm almost certain that this was a full 120 power hit, because Present one-shots Flannery's second Pokemon too taking her down to just two Pokemon. We're on a hot streak at this point, so we really can't switch out against Slugma. Eve stays in the battle and delivers another perfect present. Three attacks, three eliminations. Unfortunately, we have to switch out when Torkoal comes in. With one of the highest defense stats in the game, there's no way one present can knock her out. More importantly, an overheat from Torkoal probably will spell the end for Eve. With White Smoke preventing stat reduction, all Dasher can do is put Torkoal to sleep the rest is up to Delibird. Present number one is a crit, and almost gives Eve her fourth one-shot of the battle. Flannery uses a Hyper Potion though, so we're back to square one. Somehow, Delibird manages to connect with three more attacks before Torkoal can wake up and ruin the perfect battle. We earn the Heat Badge with a flawless victory, and now it's time to release some pent-up frustration. After all of the disrespect from Norman, I think it's about time we destroy him using only Present. We start off against Spinda, where a couple of presents do the trick, despite being confused. We switch in Dasher against Vigoroth, but Vital Spirit stops us from putting him to sleep. A few Leers and Sand Attacks soften him up for Eve, who comes in and misses the first present before knocking him out on her second try. We need Dasher alive if we make it to Slacking, so we have to risk Eve against Linoon. Once again, two hits does enough, but Delibird and Stantler both have low health. We bring Dasher in, but against a full HP Slacking, there's not a lot we can do. Stantler does get off one layer before going down to faint attack, but Delibird now has to take out a barely weakened Slacking without taking a hit. We make contact with the first present and it's a good one, forcing Slacking to heal with a Citrus Berry. Truant allows us to get in a second hit, but even though it makes contact, it doesn't do much damage. For some reason, Slacking goes for Yawn instead of any of his actual attacks, so Eve gets another shot. A critical hit finishes off Slacking, and Norman has to call Wally to console him. With 5 badges now in our possession, it's probably about time we grab some TMs to teach Delibird. With only present, we're incredibly reliant on Stantler, so maybe with a few extra moves, Delibird can be a bit more valuable. We pick up Attract, Toxic, and Double Team, which should definitely help as the battles get tougher. After taking out Team Aqua at the Weather Institute, we meet Mei just outside of Fortree City. Using her new and improved moveset, Eve wipes out Slugma, Lombre, and Grovile without any issues. With May brushed aside, it's time to go after our sixth badge. Okay, this battle took a while. A long while. Like, 12 minutes. With lots of confusion and sand attacks, we needed to switch in and out about 30 times. Anyway, Winona leads off with Swablu, whose first two mirror moves fail because Eve can't connect with the present. Our third present is an attempted heal, so Swablu gets off an aerial ace before we finally land a one-shot at the fourth time of asking. Winona sends in Skarmory next, and we do lots of intimidating, and leering, and hypnosising. That's not right. Hypnotising. All of that work from Dasher means we only need to land one present to take out the Steel-type bird Pokemon. Even a sand attack can't save Skarmory as Delibird makes contact and forces Winona to send in her third Pokemon, Tropius. We stay in with Eve, and our first hit chunks away about three quarters of Tropius' HP. She uses Sunny Day, meaning all we need to do is hit with Present and we'll be down to two. Well, Present does land, but it's only good to heal Tropius up a bit. Then she uses Synthesis, making the last several moves entirely pointless. 
Unfortunately, Tropius deals a lot of damage in the ensuing moves before eventually going down to present. Winona's penultimate Pokemon is Pelipper, and she also takes up a lot of unnecessary time. Spamming Protect and Supersonic for like 3 minutes gets a bit tiresome, but eventually she goes down to… well, present. That's sort of the whole challenge. Altaria comes out last, and with both of our team members low on HP, this will be close. Dasher manages to get off a few leers and sand attacks, but eventually Altaria gets the better of him. Finally, after a Toxic and a couple of presents, Delibird knocks out Altaria and wins us the battle. We add the Feather Badge to our case, and then make our way to Lily Cove. On the way there, we stop at Mount Pyre to have a quick chat with Archie, and pick up the TM for Shadow Ball. We teach it to Startler, who can come back here to grind up on the Wild Shuppet, which should be much easier than Switch training. With the Magma Emblem in hand, we head to the Magma Hideout on Mount Chimney to take on Maxi. We're going to skip through this quickly because there's a lot left to do and this isn't very important. Speaking of unimportant, we also have to take on the Aqua Admin Matt in the Aqua Hideout outside of Lily Cove. This is even less important because we don't even have to take on the Team Aqua Leader as he's escaping in a submarine. Once we've dealt with the evil teams, we can cross the waters to Moss Deep City to take on Tate and Liza. We needed to grind up quite a bit before this forced double battle to give ourselves a chance. The format makes this gym battle a whole lot tougher, so even at this level it might not be enough. Dasher has learned Confuse Ray now, so he can at least theoretically knock out non-ghost types by himself. Tate and Liza send out Zatu and Claydol for starters, which is certainly preferable to Solrock and Lunatone. The two rock types aren't going to be much fun to deal with using only Present. The best plan I could come up with was for Dasher to perform crowd control with Hypnosis and Confuse Ray, while Eve sets up to make herself unhittable. Dasher is knocked out before we've done any real damage, so Eve is going to have to solo run this if we're going to leave with a badge. With six double teams up, Delibird gets to work wiping out Claydol with Toxic and Present. We actually want to keep Zatu in for as long as possible because he's the only one we can hit with Attract. Present is doing almost nothing, but the one saving grace of this battle is that Tate and Liza don't use full restores. Once Eve has used Toxic, the best they can do is delay the inevitable with Hyper Potions. Before Solrock goes down, it does hit Delibird with Psychic to take her below half health. Lunatone comes in and we now get to work on knocking out Zatu. It takes quite a few hits and that's not great news. The present that ends up taking down Zatu is the last one in Delibird's arsenal. We're now out of PP for present and Lunatone's still standing. Or floating, I guess. We need to kill some time and hope Eve can avoid hits while Toxic does its job. Even after a Hyper Potion, Lunatone can't touch Delibird, and we've officially taken down the Moss Deep Gym Leaders and earned our 7th badge. As impressive as that was, that's not all we have to do in Moss Deep. At the Space Center, we've got to stop Team Magma from stealing rocket fuel to pour into a volcano. Seems like a great idea to me, but I guess we have to stop them. We team up with Steven, and once again, we're going to skip through this because it took a really long time. There's more stuff to breeze through, so let's get into it. After getting the HM for Dive from Steven Stone, we can head underwater and into the seafloor cavern. We take on Archie inside, but it's another long battle that we win pretty easily, so let's move on. Groudon and Kyogre are having a sort of notebook moment in the rain when we arrive in Sutopolis, so we just leave them alone. A talk with Wallace sends us to the Sky Pillar, where we briefly meet Rayquaza. He flies off, and yet somehow we beat him back to Sutopolis on the back of a Wingull. Seems kind of weird, but once he catches up with us, he scolds Groudon and Kyogre for messing up the weather, and then puts them in timeout. With everything back to normal, we can finally go after our 8th gym badge in Sutopolis City. I wasn't too worried about Wan's team of water types going into this, and the love disc that leads off doesn't do anything to change my mind. In fact, none of Wan's first four Pokemon are able to touch Eve or Dasher. Love Disc, Whiskash, Celio, and Crawdon all fall to present without getting a hit in. Kingdra's up last, and his uncanny ability to wake up and snap out of confusion quickly means he gets the better of Dasher while we're lowering his defense. Kingdra actually gets Delibird into one shot range before present knocks him into red health. The final move of the battle is a total coin flip. Kingdra's confused, and if he breaks through, he'll win. Luckily for us, he hits himself in confusion, and we collect the Rain Badge from Wan, now ready for the hard road to the Elite Four. Of course, we've got something massively important to do before we head for Victory Road. At the top of Mirage Tower, we pick up the Claw Fossil, and then fly to Rustboro to get it restored. Restored? Resurrected. Birthed? No, not sure any of those are right. We name our brand new Anorith Annie, and then head to the Pokemon Center to release him into the wild. 
Hopefully we can turn the entire Hoenn region into a Cambrian park of sorts. Anyway, with our fossil antics out of the way, let's get back to the whole battling portion of this game. In Victory Road, we run into Wally again, and after a tough battle, we scrape through with 3 HP remaining. With that battle out of the way, we can stroll through the rest of the cave and walk straight past the double battle at the end. This is the slacking battle, and I was sure it was mandatory, so this was incredibly confusing. Can someone comment below and tell me if this is usually mandatory, or if I'm just going crazy? If it is, then somehow my game broke. Not that I'm complaining. But that's it. We grind Asher and Eve up to level 60, and then have our first run at the Elite Four. Sydney is our first opponent, and I actually think we can beat him. I'm not too worried about this one. Mighty Anna and Dasher lead off, and this alone took way too long. Almost no damage is done for like two minutes before we switch into Eve just to miss Toxic about nine times. Eventually, we make contact with Present and knock out Mighty Anna, but it took so long that my mind started to wander. When Absol came in and used Swords Dance, I decided it would be fun to try and knock him out using only Confusion. For those of you who don't know, when a Pokemon hurts itself in Confusion, the damage is calculated as a typeless physical attack of base 40 power. It's why confusing a Pokemon like Shuckle is almost pointless, but confusing a Cranidos or Flareon can be pretty devastating. So by combining Sword Stance and Leer, we can make Confusion an incredibly powerful tool. Honestly, it's a flawless plan if you ignore the fact that Absol kept breaking out and dropping rocks on Dasher. Other than that one huge flaw, it was a completely flawless plan. Rock Slide eventually takes Stantler down to 1 HP, but he gets a final Confuse Ray off, and Absol hits himself in Confusion, wiping himself out in the process. Was it worth it? No, not really. Was it an interesting experiment? Sure. Let's speed through Shiftry's part of the battle because nothing much happens. It's just a whole lot of double team usage. Eventually he falls to poison from Toxic. Cacturn also doesn't do much. One faint attack does a good chunk of damage, but he loses out to Delibird before long. With only Sydney's Crawdon remaining, both of our Pokemon are one hit from death. Dasher manages to confuse him, but he breaks through and knocks him out with Surf. Luckily, Confusion pays off when Eve comes in, and we're able to take him out with Present. That's the first member of the Elite Four down, and Phoebe's up next. As the Ghost-type member of the Elite Four, she's the only mandatory trainer in the game with a Ghost in her team. Finally, it's Dasher's time to shine. He's champing at the bit as the battle begins, and after hitting Dusclop with Shadow Ball, the Ghost-type knocks herself out with Curse. We bring in Delibird to stop the curse, and then bring Stantler straight back in to use Shadow Ball and finish off Phoebe's first bayonet. Sableye's out third, and as she isn't weak to ghost moves, it takes a few hits to knock her out, but Dasher still gets through the battle without getting hit. Bayonet number two comes in next, and actually ends up surviving on one HP after a Shadow Ball, so we have to take a Thunder Ball. From there, Phoebe wastes a couple of full restores before we get a high roll to knock out Bayonet. Her final Pokemon is a second Dusclops who gets off a few Earthquakes, but can't take down Dasher who has crushed Phoebe's entire team. Outside of a bit of grinding at Mount Pyre, this was the only battle in this playthrough where Stantler actually got to use an attack. So it was a nice change of pace. Okay, back to only using Present. Should be fun. Glacey is the third member of the Elite Four, and it starts off easily. All Celio can do is put up a hail before going down to Present. We're back to basics on this one, so we're just going to use the classic Christmas strategy. Glacius first Glalie does a bit of damage to Dasher before we switch out. Delibird only needs one hit to finish her off though, and force out a second Celio. Once again, Dasher does some prep work, and Eve finishes the job with one hit. Then Glacia brings out a second Glalie. What a thrillingly interesting team she's assembled. There have been some repetitive Elite Four teams through the years, but Glacius really takes the cake. Anyway, her second Glalie wastes a lot of time before eventually going down without dealing any damage. Glacia's final Pokemon is Walrein, and she does at least manage to affect the battle by knocking out Stompler. Dasher did get in a few layers before going down though. Delibird comes in and finishes off Walrein with Present, and in doing so, ends the battle with full health. Glacia's down and out, but one member of the Elite Four remains, and he's gonna be tough. Drake leads off with Shellgon, and we basically just use this as an excuse to set up. After using Attract, we poison Shellgon with Toxic, and then set up six double teams. Eventually, Drake is forced to use a full restore before finally losing Shellgon to Present. I'm not sure if we could ever have a better chance of winning this battle than right now. Delibird has maxed out her evasion, and with Drake's whole team being male, she can use Attract on all of them. Flygon comes out second, and he can't hit Eve, so a combination of Toxic and Present does him in. 
Delibird has now taken down two dragons without getting hit. Salamence is Drake's third Pokemon, and Intimidate hinders us a small bit. We're going to be even more reliant on Toxic from here on out. Our first two presents result in a miss and a heal, so not ideal. When we finally score a hit, it's a crit, and along with poison, it takes Salamence down to 1 HP. Unfortunately, with one last roll of the dice, Salamence hits Delibird with Flamethrower, and it's more than enough to knock her out. So close. We bring in Dasher to let the poison finish off Salamence, but this is still a 1 on 2, and Stantler can't attack. Still, it can't hurt to try. Altaria comes in, and Dasher gets to work with Confuse Ray, Hypnosis, and Leer. As soon as Altaria is put to sleep though, Drake brings in Kingdra, knowing Altaria will wake up thanks to Natural Cure. Both of Drake's last two Pokemon are keen on using Dragon Dance, which actually works in our favour here. While Kingdra is asleep, we get off a bunch of Leers, which means when he hits himself in Confusion, it takes him down to about a quarter health. A second hit knocks him out, and somehow, without taking any damage, we've taken it down to a one-on-one. -on -one. When Altaria comes back in, we get back to work with Confusory and Leer. He actually hits himself with Confusion early on, and thanks to Dragon Dance, it takes him below half health. Unfortunately, Altaria snaps out of Confusion and hits a double edge before we can use Confusory again. But Altaria breaks through straight away, and a second double edge takes Dasher down to 9 HP. Then Drake uses a full restore. God damn it, Drake. We use our final Confusory to confuse Altaria, and then just hope for the best. Somehow, he hits himself in Confusion twice in a row and knocks himself out. I literally have no idea how we won this one, but Dasher has just taken down Kingdra and Altaria without using an attack. Okay, I'm going to set a reasonable goal here. 4 million likes and I'll do the confusion only, no attack challenge run. I feel like that's attainable. Well, we've somehow made it to the champion. I have no idea how, but we have, and it's almost Christmas, so let's get into it. Wallace leads off with his Wailord, and it's really not a great start for us. We start with Dasher and go through our strategy, and even though it works out in the end, both Stantler and Delibird get hit by Water Spout. One down, five to go. Wallace sends out Tentacruel next, but after an attract, Eve hits back-to-back -back presence to knock him out. That was easier than I expected. Ludicolo is out third, and after doing some setup with Dasher, we swap in Eve. We almost take him down with a present, but Wallace uses a full restore to heal him right back up. After Toxic and a bunch of double teams, we get another full restore usage out of Wallace. After all of the time wasting, Ludicolo goes down to present without ever getting a hit in. That's three down, three to go. Whiskash is Wallace's fourth Pokemon, and this thrilling encounter saw both Pokemon fail to hit their first four moves each. Delibird gets bored though, and hits three presents back to back to back to take down her opponent and leave Wallace with just two Pokemon. Second to last for the champion is Gyarados, and if I do the play-by-play -play for this one, this video will be an hour long. This took so long that Wallace used another two full restores, and Eve ran out of PP for present. The main thing I took from this battle is that Attract and Double Team is a terrifying combination. After what feels like an hour, Gyarados faints, I can only assume from exhaustion. The marathon is almost over. Five down, one to go. Milotic comes out last, and after Delibird uses Toxic, an Ice Beam wipes her out. Maybe Attract and Double Team isn't that unbeatable. We're down to a one on one. Dasher comes out on our side and immediately confuses Milotic. When Toxic and Confusion lowers his health, he uses Recover instead of a full restore, so we know that if we can stall, we'll win. Toxic does more damage each turn, so eventually Recover won't be enough. Confusion keeps Milotic from attacking, and eventually he falls to poison. We've actually taken down the champion and beaten Pokemon Emerald, and I have no idea how. I really did not think we would get through the Elite Four with two level 60s. I thought we were probably going to need to get to at least 70 to have a chance. And yet, somehow we got through on our first run. Dasher and Eve were inducted into the Hall of Fame, but unfortunately, there's one more battle to go. I spent way too long getting Delibird and Stantler up to level 100, because there was no chance we could beat Steven Stone at any other level. The truth is, there was no chance at level 100 either. I had to try though. I'm almost certain that if Steven's team was just Agron and Metagross, we still wouldn't have had a chance. This was never going to be possible, but I know everyone would have wanted me to try. If you made it this far, I truly hope you enjoyed, and have a Merry Christmas, or Happy Holidays, or just a good week. If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like and a comment, or subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.